morning, everybody. Welcome to the 5B4 podcast. I am Pastor John Belangia on this beautiful Monday in the great state of Georgia. Wherever you may be listening, we want to tell you thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for letting us invest into your life to try to encourage you as you kick off your week. Some of you are kicking off your week. I know some of you uh, are weekend workers, but some of you may be back to work today for the first time of the week, and we want to get you started off in the right way. And um, no matter where you are in life, we try our very best to um, to reach out to you, to speak life into you. And I believe today is going to be no different. We uh, we finished up our uh, my favorite verse little uh, few weeks, and I, I just loved it. I thought it was awesome to get all those different voices to be able to share uh, what their favorite verse was. You know, having those life verses is so important. And um, if you don't have one, I encourage you to find one, um, something that can be your go-to uh, when you when you need something to lift you up. And so we uh, we finished that up, and we're going to shift into um, this week. We were um, Pastor Kay sent me a message the other day, and she said, "Hey, what are we going to go into next?" And um, I said, "Well, uh, she she had some ideas, and we try to put our minds together on some of this stuff." And um, I just told her the other day, I said, I really think we need to talk about unity right now. Um, it, it almost seems cliche to talk about it. It almost seems like uh, we're just jumping on board with everything going on. And and I guess in a way we are. Um, we believe in trying to minister out of uh, being relevant. In fact, relevancy is one of our core values, and we want to be relevant. But it is bigger than just the time that we're in. Um, unity is something um, that is key no matter what's going on around you and no matter where you are in life. Unity is something that is very important. And I'm particularly excited to sh- talk about the subject this week. I've got a lot of really powerful verses to pull from. Um, scripture teaches so many powerful, incredible things about unity. Um, and so uh, I, I want to get us off kind of on the right foot Um Colossians chapter three verse verse fourteen. I want to. I want to. There's a lot of foundational things that we should lay here, um, and it's hard to pick and choose. Like even the one I'm going to talk about tomorrow is actually very foundational, and then the one I'll talk about um, later in the week, it's actually a little more, um, a, a little bit of a a more specific issue when it comes to unity. So it's hard to even lay foundation for just a few minutes because we try to keep these short and concise. But I want to I want to read to you out of Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, and to the church at Colossae, this is what he writes. He says, and above all these, put on love. Above everything else, he says, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, in perfect harmony. And I just want to start by reminding you that we have to make an intentional decision to put on love every single day. It's not easy to do that sometimes. It's it's not easy to do that in the climate that we're in right now where there's uh, so many things going on in our world that you may agree with or disagree with or whatever. Uh, It's not easy to do when when you have social media that is just putting fuel on the fire of everything. Um, And and you can just read something that somebody writes and you can just take it um, so harshly and you can respond so harshly. And um, it it is, it's a hard time, but, but we have to make a decision when we wake up. You know, one of the things that I do when I wake up every morning is is I I literally take time to say, okay, God, I know I'm going to face things today where it's going to be difficult for me to love in those moments. And I need you by your by your spirit, by your grace, by your mercy, by your presence to help me put on love today. And and, and listen, I'm I want to tell you, if you can learn to do this, if you can learn to be intentional every day and put on love every single day that you start your day, I promise you one thing. Um, I can't promise you that people aren't going to still, you know, come against you. I can't promise you that st- that people aren't going to say things that are hateful. I can't. I can't promise you that you're not going to be attacked. I can't promise you any of those things. But I can promise you that if you will put love on, it will make your day better. That's what I can promise you. It will make your day better. And in this passage, what it tells us is, is if we put on love, it binds everything together in harmony, in perfect harmony. Now, when I think about harmony, what I think of is the fact that because sometimes I think we have this idea of unity 
Unity meaning everybody's got to be the same. Everybody's got to think the same. Everybody's got to live the same. Everybody's got to operate the same. And that's just not what unity is. When he describes the binding together, which is a beautiful picture of unity. He says, we will be bound together when we operate in love. It is an, it is a natural byproduct of love that it brings people, it brings things together. And then he compares it to perfect harmony. And what I know about harmony, I'm not a musical guy. I'm not going to sing as much as Aaron would love for me to sing today on the podcast. Um, and I guess it's impossible to harmonize by yourself anyway. So that wouldn't even matter. I would have to get Aaron to sing with me. Um, But Aaron could speak a lot more to this. What I know about harmony is when you hear harmony, it's because all the differences come together at the right place at the right time. Um, Harmony is not made up of the same person singing the same part, singing the exact same. That's not what makes harmony. What makes harmony is you have one person singing soprano, one person singing alto, one person singing tenor, one person singing bass. And I'm sure when it comes to the the real discussion of the depth of music, Aaron could give you a much better description than I just did. That's a very simplistic, that's a very, very foundational um, way to look at harmony. But it's it's not everything being the same. It's everything coming together in its differences, and the differences bring perfection. And that's what we have to understand that we have the ability to do when we put on love. We actually can come together in our differences and bring perfection out of our differences. It can happen. It's possible. And it can be harmonious. And I don't know if, 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 if you feel this way, but when I read this passage, then one of the reasons I wanted to start with this one is because when I think about what's going on around me, harmony is the last word that I think of. Aaron, am I right? I mean, you're sitting back there. You're a harmony guy. You understand harmony. I mean, this is not harmony. This is the op. What is the opposite of harmony, Aaron? Is there a word for the opposite of harmony? I mean, I know there's pitchy. I know there's being flat, but is there a word like music? Not really. It's chaos. Then I'll use that word. It's chaos. That's what it is. If you've ever heard, uh, we have a piano over here. I-, I could go just take my fingers and I could try to hit as many notes as I could to try to create harmony. And I promise you, without the guiding of the Holy Spirit, it's going to sound atrocious because I don't know how to put all of those different keys together to make harmony. It's going to sound like chaos. That's what I see, and that's what I hear right now, guys. And it is time for the church to be the church to rise up, to put on love so that that love can actually bind together all of these differences, and we can take something right now that is chaos, and we can bring harmony out of it. And so um, I just want to start by encouraging you today. Let's pray right now and just say, God, help me to put on love. This is a message. I'm going to ask you. I don't say this all the time anymore. We used to say it a lot. Share this with somebody. Listen, if, if you're listening to this right now, share it on your Facebook. If, you, if you're listening to it on one of the apps, if you're like Spotify or whatever it is, iTunes, wherever you may be listening, why don't you send this to somebody? And, and let's make an intentional effort right now to, to give people understanding where we are, that we've got to be the church. And to do that, we've got to put on love every day. And if we do that, if we wake up and we put on love, we will actually begin to bind things together that right now are divided, we will bring together things that are different, and we will bring perfect harmony. And that's what the church is called to do. The church is called to bring perfect harmony. And sometimes I think the church is one of the most divisive organizations and entities on the planet, and that's not the intention. That's not the way God designed us to operate. We've been given, the Bible says, the ministry of reconciliation, to bring together um, And so let's put on love today. Can you do this with me? Um, I want to pray for you. Um, I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for um, maybe somebody even sitting around you right now that may be listening with you, or maybe they're not even listening and you know that they're struggling with this, um, putting on love. Why don't you pray for them right now during this time? Um, And let's be intentional about this and see what God can do with the chaos. Uh, So Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word and, and passages like this being so relevant in seasons like the one we're in right now. So help us right now today as your people, as God people, as Jesus people, to put on love. God, we don't want to put on hate. We don't want to put on bitterness. We don't want to, we don't want to put on frustration. We don't want to put on anger. We want to put on love. So help us today to put on love so that we can bind together what the enemy is trying so desperately right now to divide. We need to open our eyes and see that the enemy is trying to divide. That is what he is trying to do. 
in many different forms, not just politically. I know that's where everybody's mind is, God, but it's so many different forms, it's so many different ways that the enemy is trying to divide. So help us put on love to bring together um, all of us who are different, all of us who are created uniquely by you, purposefully by you, um, that there's nobody else like each and every one of us as individuals. Bring us together so that we can come together, bind us together to create perfect harmony. And I pray today in Jesus' name, God, that you will help the church rise up right now in this season to create perfect harmony and not division. Help us as God's people to stop being divisive, but to carry that ministry of reconciliation with us everywhere that we go. Use us, Jesus, to bring perfect harmony on this earth. Help us love each other like never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, man. Love you guys so much. Thank you for letting me share that with you. And again, um, please share that with somebody. This is so needed right now. Um, and let's spend the rest of our day being an intent, being intentional, putting on love above everything else we want to put on love today. Thank you, guys. Love you. See you tomorrow on the 5 before.